Welcome to the Cross Border Interviews. I'm your host, Christopher Brown. In this special episode, we recently ventured to Regina, Saskatchewan for the 2024 Saskatchewan Urban Municipalities Association Conference. Now amidst the networking, breakout sessions, and speeches from provincial party leaders, we engaged with local elected leaders hailing from across the province. Though this episode may be briefer than our standard episodes, its significance remains undiminished. Today, we delve into the pressing issues confronting communities communities firsthand, amplifying their voices of municipal leaders, and offering insights into the diverse challenges faced by local governance in Saskatchewan. So we'll be right back after a quick message with cross-border interviews featuring Town of LaRange Councillor Abby Bashera. Are you passionate about local governance and municipal issues? Do you believe in the power of community-driven conversations? Then join us at the Cross Border Network, where we bring together voices from across Canada to shine a spotlight on the challenges and the triumphs of our municipalities. But we need your support to keep the conversation going. Visit crossborderinterviews.ca today to show your support by backing the show monthly or making a one-time annual donation. Your contribution will help us grow and expand our reach, bringing important stories to even more listeners across the nation. Together, we can make a difference. Together, we can amplify the voices of local communities. Together, we can shape a brighter future for all. Cross Border Network, where local matters and your support counts. Visit us today at crossborderinterviews.ca. This is recording, but we're gonna cut this out. <laughs> yep. Um, Abby, thank you so much for doing this. Greatly appreciate it. I wanna start by asking a simple question, but an overarching one. Where did your sense of duty to serve your community come from? I've always had opinions. That is the best answer <laughs> I've ever gotten on this show. So truthful, so down to earth. It's, uh, I've developed into both a bureaucrat and a politician. I never knew which direction I would go. Turns out I did both. Um, First, it was just interest in politics and some of the drama and excitement that that can cause. Then I found planning, like land use planning. I uh, did a whole degree in it, worked in it for not quite a decade. Got a little jaded and decided the other side of the table was more interesting. So ran for election, got elected to municipal council. Was there an issue going on in LaRange at the time when you decided to put your name forward? Or was it just that sort of general sense that I see what's going on on the other side of the table and I want to be there? It was frustration at not being able to be part of the decision making. I felt I had views. Um, working on the bureaucracy side of things was fun and <laughs> full of information, data, education, which are all things that I really get excited about. But then presenting that to a group of, at the time, it was all men on this council, and just seeing it kind of swatted away as not worth anything uh, in their decision-making process, um, I felt I needed to maybe change that one for representation to because I needed to put my voice in there and advocate for good planning when it comes to land use in LaRange because it was not being paid attention to um, and again opinions. So it's an interesting perspective you bring to this conversation because I've sat down with many municipal leaders, whether it be mayors, reeves, councillors, and I've asked them the same question over and over again. And it's around the decision making as a councillor, because you as a councillor get the recommendation from administration and you've been on that part of giving the recommendation uh, to council. But you at the end of the day now have to make that final decision. How do you make that decision in a way that is for the best of the community with the recommendation that administration gives you, but also the knowledge that you have. Is it hard? Oh, it's incredibly difficult. Some, well, sometimes. Okay. Sometimes it's incredibly difficult. Sometimes I wholeheartedly know what my vote is. Um, there's 
we have a particular issue happening in La Ronge right now with a uh, zoning, rezoning request and development permit for a use that is controversial sometimes. Um, there is a lot of information on both sides. There's a lot of support on both sides for the, the, the development. I still haven't decided. Um, I feel my duty at this point in the game is to keep listening to information, being open-minded, and not going in with a decision. We're going to have a public hearing, and while... How important is that? Because there's always unconscious biases that we all have within ourselves, right? And you as a counselor, and I, when you said what you just said, it made my heart flutter a little bit. <laughs> because you're right, you're supposed to go into every council meeting with an open mind, no matter what. Even if it's a decision you know what you're going to make, you have to be able to open, be open to hearing ideas from other people, other mm. counselors, or the public. Is it hard to keep an un, uh, an unbiased opinion on certain things when they come in front of you with the background that you have? I think it's become easier over the four years. Yeah. At the beginning, I my opinions <laughs> were very strong. I was uh, ready to put them out there and debate anybody that wanted to oppose it and kind of go that direction. Definitely through mentorship of some of my count, council colleagues that um, I've had, I have become better and learned more to recognize maybe some of those biases that I jump to mm -hmm. and stop and reflect. And that's also like, you know, a personal development thing. In my own life, I've faced my own challenges of, uh, my <laughs> personality and proclivities that have made me a bit abrasive to people and I've tried to improve them. Um, so I try and take that same approach to my decision making at council. I also have some wonderful people in my life that offer me a chance to debate some of the issues before I get to the council table that have information on it that can offer me a different perspective that I can learn from and figure out how to navigate maybe my own decision making because in the end we're going to go through this public hearing next week um it is live streamed. by the time this airs a week ago <laughs> <laughs> uh it will be on the internets for everybody to watch um it'll be fun i'm sure i don't think i'll have an answer until the vote okay. is called like i i really am not sure and I don't want to expect myself to have an answer until I've heard everything and until maybe I see what my fellow councillors are voting. Because that may have part of my decision is when the vote count comes down to it, how does mine play in that mix? So I want to flip the uh, line of questioning and now talk about LaRange as a whole. We talked about yourself, but we're talking about LaRange now. Um, before I do, as I always do, this is a conversation conversation between the councillor and myself, not a motion of council, not a direction of council, not a policy of council, but her opinion and her opinion of the law. <laughs> For those who are about to send their emails, I'll file them in the appropriate location. <laughs> councillor, in your opinion, as of us talking right now, what is the biggest challenge facing LaRange today? Today? As of this conversation. As of this conversation. And it, what do you see as the biggest challenge or hurdle? I definitely am proud to say that our biggest challenge right now is finding the funding for the infrastructure or development readiness that we need. Because I would not have said this four years ago. Not at all. Okay. Um, we've been through a lot of turmoil with administration and um, by-elections and all sorts of bumps in the road to get to this point. But as of today, we have an incredibly strong administration. Um, we have a, a wide diversity of voices around the t council table. And a healthy respect for everybody else's opinions, I would say, for the most part, that none of those are, are really big challenges. 
right now we are on a path of being development ready and being ready for the growth that is going to happen in the community. So as of right now, we need to find the money for it. Until that happens, you can't let the community just stall, though. No. You have to continue to move the city, the community forward. How do you balance the needs of your community, the challenges that they face with infrastructure funding deficits, with the realities of people struggling here and now? Because you can't make all those infrastructure projects a reality today unless you raise taxes 4,000% or 400% or whatever the percent number is, how do you balance what your community needs with the realities that you currently operate in? That one's tougher. <laughs> That's okay. a more tough question. It is, it, but it's a one that you have to look at every because every time something comes in front of you, mm-hmm. you're not looking at it as an issue for today. You're looking at okay, does this rent? This, is this going to negatively impact people in my community or in my even my neighborhood or in my? To be honest, what I'm looking at right now is, you know, we're at end of term. Yeah. Um, we have managed to cement in a lot of really good policy and policy improvements. We have created some structures and processes that leave the small decisions that are not uh, council level decisions. We've left those in the hands of administration with the parameters for them to make good decisions, Um, which is, in effect, removing red tape. We've made those improvements to be able to keep the big decisions at council table instead of the little ones to not be bogged down so that we can focus on these bigger issues in lobbying efforts and um, having the bigger picture of the town's growth in mind. So to flip it, because I'm just cautious of time here, because we're at SUMA and you want to make sure you get back Uh to the preliminary sessions that are going on. But what is the thing that you are most proud of when it comes to LaRange and council? I think in how far we've come. It's, uh, like I said, rocky road. You can, <laughs> it's, you can, been a, it's been a long four years? It's been a very interesting <laughs> and storied four years, I think. Uh, and the town had, my opinion, there was poor morale in the town office. There was... Um, no certainty for developers uh, or even residents. There was uh, I w- I'd It's been a rough it's been a rocky four years. I think that we've come are you to off, a p- Are you better off than you were four years ago? Heck today? yeah! So go. much better off. And that's the thing is we've built foundations that we are solid on at this point. And, you know, I'm really sad to see that we're going to be losing certain incumbents on our council to provincial aspirations, um, but the foundations that they have laid and the opposition to what may be, you know, more common, um, commonly held ideas at that table, have really allowed us to progress and offer a bit more diversity in view at that table and serve more of the public as a whole. So last question for you, and it's the million dollar question. What makes Laurent such a unique place to live, to work, and to raise a family? <laughs> it's the old <laughs> adage, but it's the yep. million dollar question because I think every municipal leader knows how to answer it. I think the fact that... When I moved to LaRange 11 years ago, I made the choice to stay. I moved from Toronto. LaRange is a place that can be home for weeks, months, years, decades. There is something there for everybody. It's not for everybody, but you can definitely find elements that make it a home for a while. You can find a career jumping point or you can find a long-term career path. There's 
an amazing amount of work available in the community. We do have a lot of job vacancies. We've got a lot of um, well-paying jobs. We've also got a lot of service level jobs, uh, which I wish were more <laughs> better paying, but that's... We're getting there, right? Uh, <laughs> Can't win them all in the first four <laughs> years. They're uh, We, It's a beautiful, beautiful place. We've got nature on your doorstep. We've got a lake right there. We've got kilometers upon kilometers of bush trails that have been developed for mountain biking and ecotourism. We've got all your amenities that you actually need. Um, people do not have to leave the community for goods or services for the most part, which I think I'm pretty proud of when it comes to 10 years ago versus today. We've definitely grown in the services and goods that we provide up there. Being a two and a half hour drive away from the closest major center, it can be tough to yeah. get out, but we have what we need. So it's a great little peaceful place to be. It's definitely not the rat race of the city. And for a lot of people, that's what they love. Councillor, thank you so much for doing this. This thank has you. been a pleasure. Yes. We want to thank the Saskatchewan Urban Municipality Association for inviting us to this year's SUMA AGM in Regina, Saskatchewan. This episode would not have been achievable without their support. So if today's episode sparked your interest, hit that subscribe button now. Stay in the loop with all our diverse content covering everything from municipal affairs to our in-depth conversations with municipal leaders from across Canada on the cross-border interviews or our eye-opening exploration of local governance in the political trenches, local government at work. We are your go-to platform for comprehensive municipal coverage, committed to keeping you well-informed as well as engaged. But... Your support is the backbone of our growth and the maintenance of this top-notch content you have come to enjoy. If you can, consider backing the show. Every contribution, big or small, amplifies the depth and the breadth of our programming. Find the support page link on the Cross Border Interviews website today. Until next time, stay informed, stay engaged, and most importantly, just keep talking.